Hi, everybody. It is September 12, 2019. 96 degrees. I can barely breathe. I'm going to be posting a video on the trees here. The trees, in the time that I've been in Anderson, South Carolina, which has been on and off for about four years, I cannot believe that the, the rapidity with which our trees are dying here is it's remarkable and then you think about the importance of trees to our life and life itself they clean the air and they allow us to breathe and they're dying all of the toxins the geoengineering the, the chemtrails the all of it contributes to this the saturation of the induced, man-induced electromagnetic frequencies that also dry out certain regions and whatever they want to bring to us, uh, yeah, they can. I was thinking about the drought here when I was looking at all of these trees that are screaming, screaming because they're dying of thirst uh, of all of the toxins and, and everything, but drought upstate South Carolina. The heat here has been unbearable. And you're talking or listening to someone who never has liked air conditioning. And up north, I, I hardly, I remember once, you know, putting it on for my dogs. But air conditioning was not my thing. I, and even in South Carolina, for the first couple of years, living through the summers, I didn't use, I don't like air conditioning because it doesn't, uh, I have maybe an adverse effect than a lot of people. This year has been the worst ever. It, it, it the air is, I, I, it's hard to breathe. It's just hard to breathe. And it really is oppressive. When you think about everything that we are facing today, which I do, and then you come across this. This is No Bullshit Channel, which I recommend that you check it out and subscribe. But I'm having a hard time breathing so much is going on. I have so many subscribers who are now falling prey to the evil who are facing extraordinary circumstances, not in, in, in the sense that they're good circumstances, but bad circumstances, whether it's serious medical issues or, you know, fighting the frequencies where they're having difficulty even just with basic functioning, losing jobs, losing homes, going homeless, subscribers who have killed themselves, um, subscribers who are really hurting. And yeah, you're on my mind a lot because, you know, I'd love to think of some easy, fast way to get you help, but what, you know, So much is going on. And then I do. I come across this crap. And it does. It, it just... I get incensed. Hello and welcome back to No Bullshit. Today we're covering another video by the stark leftists at Now This News. And you'll never believe what has them triggered this time. The common phrase, hey guys, is what's in question today. And as you might have suspected, it's the gendered part of this popular phrase that's what's making these lefties a little upset. It's also worth noting that hey guys is one of, if not the most popular introduction in the Western world. Did you catch my video? A couple of days ago, when I mentioned that the feminists were coming after me because 
I very often start my videos with, hi guys. Don't you know that women are also listening to your videos? You're disempowering women by using hey guys or hi guys. Okay. All right. Do I need to state at the outset? I have never been a feminist. I will never be a feminist as feminism has become a more tyrannical, idiotic, it's filled with crazy people just as it was pretty crazy when I was younger listening to uh, that glorious Steinem. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I, this is now a bad term to use and you'll be attacked if you say, hey, hey guys, hey guys, what do you do with this? What do you do with this? This is what they focus on. The, the insignificance of all of their agenda, when people are suffering, when this country's gone down, when we are absolutely already a police state, a surveillance state, and people are dying, this is what they focus on. These linguistic tendencies were developed and reinforced in eras where women were barely meant to be seen and certainly not heard. Please note, you're not a bad feminist if you're comfortable with using the phrase guys. There are larger issues that we, the feminists, need to combat. Reproductive rights, rape culture, violence against women, LGBTQ rights, and the general reprogramming of most people's minds. Oh, wow. the general reprogramming of most people's minds. You ain't going to get me reprogrammed. All right. Ah. Uh, huh. You know what I hated about feminism early on when I was much younger? When that feminist movement was coming about? It, it definitely was my upbringing that as a young adult, I got the importance of parenting. I got the importance of having a healthy, loving, caring, respectful mother. Because when you have that kind of mother, it puts you on a trajectory to become a healthy, loving, caring, compassionate adult. When you have a mother that is so, well, it's a whole range of dysfunction, they set you on a trajectory to become someone like this a crazy, unhealthy uh, person in society. And guess what? We have a lot of them. We don't talk about parenting. The most important job on the face of the earth is parenting. We don't talk about that. Why? Well, parents don't ever want to take any responsibility for producing this as a young adult. Uh, I'm not saying that words don't have meaning. I'm not saying that there isn't some validity, you know, to uh, men overpowering women and all that. And I'm not saying that men, there aren't men out there who disrespect women because they just think that they're second class citizens. But how did they get to be that man? Ah, parenting. So, parenting, I have always said, is the most important job. But I grew up as a baby boomer, listening and having that drummed into my brain. I was a second class citizen and I had to break through that. So as a young baby boomer, that was drummed into my brain. 
And I realized as an adult that I had that psyche. How did I get that psyche? Because it was drummed into my brain, just like this, this is the drumming into the younger generation's brain that you say, hey guys, you're disempowering women. And that needs to be reprogrammed in you. Are you kidding me? I realized early on, I've had those moments in life and I don't know why I have you know, the brain that I do, but there have been so many times when I faced that crossroad and I didn't ignore it. So many times that crossroad was the life experience that is the teacher. I, I, when I was younger, I always gravitated towards men. I've had men as close friends. I was a natural athlete, so, you know, playing tennis, you know, I would be playing with men. Um, it wasn't until someone suggested that I apply to Smith College. I didn't know what Smith College was, had never heard of it. I come from a family of immigrants. I was the first born here. And my family, no one talked about this country, no one talked about Scotland. Uh, I didn't know anything, Not, nothing. We didn't talk. You know, I come from, you know, the, uh, the severe end of dysfunction because it is a continuum. So, and I grew up with a mother who was very ambitious. And that was a term, that was a word that was used an awful lot. Women who are ambitious, they were worth something. And their ambition was not towards their children. Their ambition was towards becoming a success in the working world, the corporate world especially. I didn't get then that this was a movement that was orchestrated to break the family. I didn't get, get that it was deliberate to get women into the workforce so they would lose control over their children. But I really did get that a whole lot of people were being raised in dysfunctional homes and nobody seemed to care about that. So what was being produced were an awful lot of young adults who were really dysfunctional. When you have families that are dysfunctional, you have a dysfunctional society and it only gets worse until you resolve that dysfunction. But I also really got that women decades ago were being trashed for choosing to stay home and raise their children. Well, and then things became so uh, the economy, women had to go into the workforce because no longer was it possible to raise a family with only one parent working. Oh, those who really were um, well off financially, they could do it. But most couldn't now. Now women had to go and work. They didn't have a choice. Well, many actually did have a choice. They could have chosen to not keep up with the Joneses. They could have chosen their children over material success, but they didn't because they grew up in an unhealthy home and became adults who were unhealthy and who were all about themselves. Give me approval and look at me. I'm a success, not as a mother, 
but as a working female in the corporate world and wow look at this home and look at this car and look at the clothing and look at all of these you know material products that I'm able to buy and I'm great while you neglect your children I have always said and I've gotten attacked for it if you bungle raising your children I don't think whatever else you do matters very much. Jackie Kennedy, I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of people, oh, Jackie Kennedy was part of, I don't care. Those words are, ac are absolutely right. Now, many societies don't, you know, applaud mothers. I applaud mothers who raise their children in a manner that sets them on a trajectory to be healthy adults because they are the ones, those mothers are the ones that produce a healthy society. Mothering and then fathering is the most important job on the face of this earth. Whether you are being applauded for it or not, it doesn't matter. If you make the choice to bring in a life, to bring in a child into this world, and you have decided that your work is more important and your material success is more important and your stature in your community is more important and your reputation and all of this bullshit is more important than your children, you should never have brought a child into this world. It's your own individual psyche that tells you that you've got to go off and do things to get approval from other people in your life and neglect your children. Yeah, it's your own in individual psyche that tells you that you are being oppressed by men. Now, I never had that sense. Never did I feel like I was being oppressed by a man. Uh, never felt that I was being disrespected. I, oh, I've had those moments of people, you know, men that just were like, well, they were raised by dysfunctional parents and became adults that, well, they treated women like shit. Um, where did it start? It started in the family. It started with their parents. Did I, was I raised in, you know, a family that I saw a man respect a woman? No, both of my, I was lucky, both of my parents. My father was psychopathic. My mother is a severe narcissist. So, uh, my programming was, whoa, the human being is really fucked up. It wasn't a woman or a man. But I did get that I had been inculcated in believing that I was a second-class citizen. When did that moment arrive? When someone told me what Smith College was, an all-girls school the top, one of the top, uh, all, all over the world, one of the top all girl school, I immediately rejected the idea. I didn't want to go. And I thought about that. I thought, what, what is that about? And I realized I did have inculcated in me that I was a second class citizen. Where the hell did that come from? It didn't come from my father. It didn't come from my mother. What, what, well, what came from them was, I was just worthless and shouldn't exist. <laughs> but I didn't have that skew from them. So where did it come from? I realized that I had that inculcated into my brain because I had a glorious dynam and people like her forever telling me that I was a second class citizen. And when I realized that 
yeah, I knew I had to apply to Smith. So I went to Smith. And I was able to work through that. And I realized much of it comes from our own psyche. It's not someone doing it to you. It's you buying the horse shit from them that allows you to then think that you are oppressed. You know, and it's funny too, because decades ago, well, we did have, you know, an awful lot of um, programming. You know, women in the 50s, I'm sure there were women who didn't want to stay home and uh, raise their children. Well, you should not have had children then. But there were also women who didn't stay home, women who didn't have children, women who decided, I want to go to college and get educated, and they did. Was it a little bit harder then? Yeah. But they, because they had a psyche that wouldn't allow anything to stop them, they did it. Those women in the 50s, and I'm thinking of uh, uh, Rosalie Bertel. Uh, in, in the early 50s, there she was studying, you know, I, I can't remember exactly what it was, but those fields that were the men fields of, you know, education. Um, so much, we're told, comes from this uh, system. And when you believe that, then you allow the system to continue to control you. The individual has to work on their own self, you know, to break their conditioning and do the work necessary. But I will tell you, yeah, I did get attacked. Somewhere I got that if you raise a child to be in a healthy home with healthy parents, loving and caring, you contribute to society in a way that is far more profound than anything else anything else you know and for the women who were trashed in the 70s and 80s for wanting to be that mother to stay home I I I literally could not understand this at all but now it's become so obvious that something is so wrong you know, children are not a distraction from more important work. They are the most important work. So whether you're being applauded for that work or not, you are doing the most important work on the face of the earth. And if you bungle that, as clearly the parents of this young woman have, they bungled their job, nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. It does not matter that you stand and get awards for being that powerful woman in the corporate world and people, you know, you show up at the podium and you accept that award and people are standing up and yay, 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 you're so unbelievable as a woman and you neglected your children. You're a force of detriment. You help to destroy society. I have had subscribers and friends 
who have done a really good job parenting. And I have to tell you, there is no, no other human beings that I give more respect to than those parents who do a really good job and feel that it is the most important job to raise their children properly. And no, you know, it's not, I get to do whatever I want to my children, you know, and you have no say. I have every say because when they become adults, they affect us all. Oh, man, do we need to focus on parenting. Yeah. She considers it really important to reprogram people's minds. That in itself should be the statement that really <laughs> begs questions that this is an orchestrated agenda to reprogram people you're not going to reprogram me I think you're a crazy tyrant who has a nice smile but you're crazy because you grew up in crazy adults don't become a crazy person when they grow up in healthy environments. They become crazy people by growing up with crazy people and crazy thinking and crazy ideas. But they don't focus on this. Interesting, huh? I recently received some hate mail. This is a mother who vaccinated her child. And, well, what happened after the vaccination? Do you hear any of these feminist talk about these mothers who are truly being oppressed by pediatricians? Is it just men? No. Women also. You've got to get your child vaccinated. If you don't vaccinate, then I'm dropping you as a patient. If you don't vaccinate, you can't send your children to school. California effectively mandated vaccines. Do any of them talk about that? No. They talk about women getting an abortion and that's their right. They never talk about the women who, is it not their right to choose whether to vaccinate their child or not? You don't hear anything about that. You don't hear them. They're not, they're not taking on the really, the most important issues here. You don't hear them talk about parenting and the importance of parenting well, you don't hear them talk about how many women, how many mothers and fathers who have had their children destroyed by vaccines. You don't hear them talk about, and they don't come out in full force to uh, scream, it is a woman's and a man and the parent and the mother, the father's right to decide whether or not to vaccinate their child. They never, ever talk about that. They talk about, hey, we've got to reprogram people's minds to not say, hey guys, because it disempowers women. Really. As children are dying and being destroyed and families are being destroyed, something's up there. Something's very wrong, right? The most important is protecting children, making sure that they grow up healthy. 
and she's going to focus on <laughs> reprogramming people's minds. All right. Uh, our country is a mess, and then I get somebody who's upset that I said our country because he's an American and I guess took it personally. What? Uh, Jesus. Our country is a mess. This is what happened to this woman. And she talks about the DTAP. <sighs> and how she didn't want to vaccinate her child on the CDC schedule. And her pediatrician, she and her husband talking to their, their pediatrician at length about the vaccines. And they decided the DTAP was all that they would, or there was another vaccine that's all that they would, they would do. Well, guess what? So the force, force that, that came out of nowhere, nowhere this, was the, the force, force that made me get, get up and, and go check, check on her. It was, it, it was, was like, like this, um, it's so, so hard, hard to explain. explain. I, don't I don't even, it was, it was something that made me go in there. there. So, so I, I got, got up and I remember my plate falling on the floor and I didn't even care. And I ran into the room and I turned on the light and she didn't look right. And this, and this all happened in a matter of seconds. I remember placing my hand on her chest, and I just kind of rocked her a little bit. I called her name, I clapped my hands, I picked her up, and her head sort of tingled. And I knew right then, I was like, I got to keep CPR, I'm like, God damn it. Like, this is happening, this is happening. So I remember laying on the ground. Thank God, thank God it was flight attendant. Because I had no CPR. I don't, I don't know, know that she, she would be here today. today. And I'll, I'll get, get back, back to this later, later, but I fucking urge all, all of you parents, parents please, please learn CPR. CPR. Um, what, what seemed, seemed like another eternity, she, she responded, responded. And she, she started, started breathing again, thank God. So I picked her up, and, and I grabbed, grabbed my phone, phone and I dialed 911. And it died. It died. Of, course, of course, my phone, phone died. died. So, so I went outside, outside and I remember screaming, screaming so loud, please, please somebody, somebody help me, call 911. And, and my neighbor came out, and thankfully called 911, and the fire department, department was right around the corner, corner. so they were there within seconds, seconds and they, they took over. over. Thank, Thank God, God that they were in the children's hospital, hospital and, um, and no, I remember the pediatrician coming in, and after doing all these tests, and we were there for hours, um, he uh, uh, determined that her reaction was uh, indeed the DTAP. And, uh, and uh, so, so, in the, the same, same breath, he also said, had she not gone and checked, checked out when you really did, did, she would have been, been a sick baby. baby. <sighs> this is this baby. baby. Now, now I'm, I'm friends, friends with, with parents who have, have lost their baby, baby to vaccines. vaccines. And I feel so, so guilty, guilty sometimes, sometimes because, because I, I saved, saved my baby. baby. I was, I was able, able to save my baby. baby. And I just I was, was able to save her. I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sorry for you. And, uh, and I remember the pediatrician coming in and saying, Please, please research, research more. more. And, and understand, understand, please. God, understand, understand that there's, there's no, no safe, safe vaccine. vaccine. There's, there's absolutely, absolutely no, no safe, safe vaccine. vaccine. Uh, yeah. This is happening to hundreds of thousands of women and men, and you never hear these feminists talk about the importance of, well, healthy children and not getting them injected with toxins that kill them, destroy their health. You don't hear them talk about, how about that food that has been taken over by Monsanto, genetically modified organisms that don't sustain 
people's health. <clears throat> you don't hear them talk about the wars, the killing of innocent people all over the world that we are doing right now. Now, hey guys, we have to make sure we don't say that anymore. This is pure lunacy. But you never hear them talk about the most important job is raising your children. Why? Because it's deliberately orchestrated to break the family and to give over the children to the state. So these people are destroying, helping, the useful idiots helping to destroy this country. Something went wrong with the parenting of this child. For her to have grown up to be this adult. It starts with the family. Oh, the system isn't the problem. The Jews aren't the problem. The Zionists aren't the problem. The Jesuits aren't the problem. The evil elite are not the problem. The problem is the individuals who bring into the world life and how they raise their children. That's the problem. And, you know, when you think about uh, how successful all of these agendas are, then you really need to think about all of the agendas, uh, all of the individuals who refuse to do any work to reprogram their psyches so that their psyche is their individual psyche as opposed to the psyche that these people want to inject into you. Yeah, it takes an awful lot of work to become an individual who is healthy in society. A whole lot of work. Parents don't want to ever take responsibility for what they have done to their children. Uh, they remain as adult children and the dysfunction that I saw early on when I was a young adult has gotten so much worse because we never focus on the most important things in life developing, growing, maturing, getting our, our brains operating well and in a healthy manner. Um, you know, the most profound and deep indoctrination comes from parents. And as young adults, you're left with the job of doing the work necessary to rid yourself of that indoctrination. You come into the world raised in dysfunctional families. You become dysfunctional adults, and it's your job because nobody else is going to do it. You have to do it. You've got to take responsibility for those issues that you have from your childhood and you got to do that before you have children because if you don't you'll be passing on those issues that's why they say that dysfunction is generational look i don't know what people will just do what's easiest and that has gotten us right here. We are a very screwed up society, but it's not coming from the evil elitists. It's coming from our families. The family is the bedrock of all societies. When you take the family in the aggregate, 
that is what manifests your society. And if it's crazy, and if it's just uh, uh, you end up living in a psych asylum, you can look back at the family in the aggregate. <sighs> Obviously, I could go on forever and ever. But, you know, it's the family is the most important unit in society. And just look at our society. What has manifested? It does stem from the family. So if we don't do that work necessary to get ourselves healthy, not the well-adjusted to a deeply disturbed society, but truly well and healthy loving, caring, compassionate, not self-centered, narcissistic, greedy people, then we'll just continue on down this road. But when you look at the younger generation and what they're pushing, holy shit, are we in trouble. Sorry, guys. I know a lot of you have a hard time hearing me say we need to be focusing on parenting, we need to be focusing on the family, we need to be focusing on our own selves to be healthy adults. And when we don't, yeah, we can blame ourselves for this psych asylum that we are living in.